When we get to heaven, will it be because of what we did or what Jesus did? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. Today we have Jonathan Nebaker and uh, sure glad that you made it and uh, come you. over and share your story with us. Yes. Now, before I begin, Jonathan wanted to kind of explain a little bit what happened to his voice when he was a baby. Yes. Tell us about that. All right. So they had to do some operations because I was sick. They did some operations and it damaged the nerves. It killed the nerves in both my vocal cords. Oh, so boy. one is completely paralyzed and another is partially paralyzed. Wow. So I'm not using those to speak. I'm using them above or below, the things above or below. I forgot what they're called, but... You've had to learn that, I guess, yes. huh? Oh, that's amazing. Well, I thought I'm aware. Sounds, sounds good, and feel free to take a drink whenever you need to, okay? <laughs> anyway, well, so, as we usually do, where were, were you? were born here in Utah, were you? Yes. And, uh... Where were you, um, was that? Is it, did you go to school here? Yes, okay. born and raised. So. Born and raised, okay. Yes. And were you born in the church? Yes. Oh, you were. Okay. Yes. Were your parents active? Um, uh, my dad, he went goes and he always went because of my mom. Oh. He's not. He's kind of the laid back, lukewarm. What we call lukewarm, oh. disillusioned. Okay. I mean, but were he, they married in the temple? Yes, that's okay. the only time he ever went before his before his mission. And to get married. Oh, where'd, where'd he go on his mission? Frankfurt, Germany, where my family, my ancestry's from. Oh, well, that was kind of lucky, huh? Yes. <laughs> I guess. So my mom, she's staunch, though. My dad is not. So she's active. And yeah. she took you, and you got baptized, did you, yeah. when you were eight? By my dad, yeah, of all things. Yeah, well, yeah, well that's... People. Yes. And uh, did you end up in scouts and yes, do all that I did kind all of that. stuff? Priesthood and all that stuff? Oh, when, yes. When you're a young man and all that? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess you had a pretty good testimony of the church. Oh, yeah, I you? did. I used to see like visions and stuff like that. But You did? <laughs> yes, but I won't get into that because that's not okay. the purpose of this. But, right. But, um, but you had a sense that Joseph Smith was a prophet. And, and I always believed in Jesus Christ. Well, not always, but I won't get into that. But um, when I got into some dark stuff, yeah. But when I totally turned my heart over to Mormonism, then it began to be I believed in Joseph Smith and Jesus Christ and all that. But it was never. I mean, it was never that Jesus was enough until I became a Christian. Oh, that is, always, it is interesting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I always grew up because I read the books. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to. You know, be baptized and, right. you know, the end is never, you could just have salvation through Christ. So did you ever read the Book of Mormon? Yes. Did you? Yes. And what did you think of that? At the time, to be honest, I really believed it was true. I really loved it. There were yeah. really some... I did too. Beautiful. But... I did too. Reading the Bible now, it's like, oh, that's more beautiful. That's the best thing ever. That's the only Word of God. Did you ever take seminary? Yes. Did you? Did you study the Book of Mormon? Or? Yes. Do you ever recall them ever talking about archaeology or any of the other? They try, but it's spoiled. It's, it's yeah. yeah. They, they do, and they point to Central America. And there's a whole bunch of, um, let me see, um, you know, fair Mormon and the apologetics on that, but they yeah. fail. There's really no evidence for it. Well, it, it's interesting. I guess we always hope that something would be found, right? Yes. In Central America or somewhere oh, no. that yeah, w yes. would prove that the church is, uh, or the Book of Mormon was true. And uh, Did you ever, I don't know how old you were when the, the, the seer stone came out. Did you ever hear about the seer stone and Joseph Smith putting his head in a hat? And yeah. I, did you hear about that? Yeah, I was out of my teens when the seer stone came out. Yeah. It always seemed funny to me that the gold plates, they. They preserved them so carefully, and he buried them, and they, he had to go back every four years to yeah, that sounds like before it. he got them, and then and then he didn't even use them. Yeah, and he couldn't tell. He had to hide them and not tell. Yeah, you know people, which it seems like a, a Superman sort of <laughs> sci-fi sort of. Like Do you that. think very many Mormons know about that? Uh, um, I think a lot of them do. They just kind of sweep it under the rug and, yeah. or they had their own 
reasons and interpretations for it, but it, it just always seemed very weird to me. Yeah. So when you were uh, going through school and seminary and all that, did any questions ever come up about the church to you? Oh, yes. Um, I used to have debates and a lot of stuff to the point where they just said, go to fair or go. Or What, what kind of questions were you asking? Or um, I was asking why, you know, about polygamy and why Joel Smith did this or that, like lied to his wife about the polygamy. And who, who, did, who did you go to? I Who'd went you, to my priesthood leader. A, a bishop or just a... Uh, just a priesthood leader in the teacher's quorum. Yeah. And other, and, and bishops too. Yeah. Um, what did they say? They tried to answer with the apologetics, but eventually they said, just go to fair. Or they said, can I just put a flip-flop a lot? And at this point, I saw, uh, there's still demons that try to get me to do that, but at any point, <laughs> What I'm saying is that they eventually said something to the effect of, well, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. And they didn't want to argue. Yeah, they didn't want yeah. to argue. And I can understand how that could get yeah. frustrating. But. Well, especially if they don't really uh, really know. Now, the church has come out with some gospel essays. Have you read any of those? Or yeah, yeah. They kind yeah. of admitted to the polygamy and yep. that kind of stuff. Yes. What do you think of those? Have you? I think they're just trying to grab, grab at anything they can. to The church, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to explain why they do stuff. I mean, it's yeah. interesting when you read them. They seem to make sense unless you really think about what they're Yes. They're trying to say. and yeah. I think they're just, what's the phrase, uh, grab it? There's a certain phrase with the word grab it in, but it Grabbing means, at straws? Yeah, <laughs> basically. It means... Grasping you know, at straws? Yeah, I guess. They're, yeah. They're, they know they're done, basically. And You think so? I don't I think know. so. I don't know, but I think so, I hope. So my whole life was like, I believed it all. And I guess I'm just this far along, and I, I just think the general authorities and others are just further along, but they believe the same thing I did. But I've just come to see things so much differently now. And I pray and wish that these general authorities could see things the way yes. I do. But I know they're further along, but I mean, you had a testimony to, of Joseph Smith, didn't you? And yeah, Book yeah. Of Mormon, I did. and I did. Yeah. So, so tell us what happened. What, uh, what made you kind of look at the church a little differently? Well, I was online debating. and uh, Debating? With Christians. With? Um, other Christians. When I was telling online. Christians that they were wrong? Basically, it was, a, it was all the apologetics. What were you saying to them? Um, I can't even remember now, but it was... About polygamy? Or? And about the Book of Mormon. And, that you knew it was true. And grace, I had the grace alone argument. Or they say, well, can we just do whatever we want then? Oh, do you think the, most of the Christians think that that's what, I mean, most of the Mormons think that's what Christians think, yes. believe, isn't it? Yeah. That we can just do it, whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah. And there's other issues, but I can't remember. But at any rate. Um, well, well, when you talk about grace, and, and we always talk about grace and works. Yeah. Did you believe that works were necessary to get to heaven? Oh, yeah. You had to go to the temple and pay your tithing and all that stuff. Yeah, until I believe, now let me just say this, I'm not trying to promote Mormonism because I don't like it, but um, through my various LDS visions, which were totally grace alone, I believe God used them to introduce me to, hey, this is just grace alone. You can't do whatever you want, but you're just not saved by your works. Well, that's why I pose the question at the yes. beginning, is this what Jesus, uh, is it what we do to get to heaven or is it what Jesus did? It's what Jesus did. Yeah, what, but you didn't understand that as a Mormon, did you? No, I didn't. No. Yeah. Um, so let me continue, so let me share sure. one. Sure, go ahead. Um, I really did, and again, I'm not trying to promote Mormonism, but I did have one type of experience that I will tie into Jesus alone. Okay. Um, I had a fight with my friend, a really good friend at the time, and in that I really did feel like I had a vision of Joseph Smith defending me, saying, she has a compassion, so-and-so, show him what love is about, or what Christ's love is about. And so I took that to mean, well, this guy's really defending me. But what I didn't realize is that, you know, Christ paid for everything on the cross. He's my defender. He loves me so much, and everyone else so much, that. Yeah. 
he he was uh, willing to come and yeah and he's god i mean he's everything by all in all now did you didn't understand that as a mormon did no, you no i didn't no um, so you were trying to defend joseph smith as as though he did something special right yeah i and this fight had nothing to do with that but it it was but anyway um Eventually, I had an epiphany. I was debating online. Yeah. And I had this epiphany. Oh, man, I'm a sinner. I could die in my sins right now. <laughs> and if hell is real, then I'm probably going there. Oh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please save me. And yeah. that's my born-again experience. That was your born-again experience? Yes. Well, that's miraculous. I mean, yes. to, uh, to have... Do you feel like Jesus kind of came into your heart and taught you that? Or what, what, what made yeah. you think of that? Yeah, um, I believe it was more of the Holy Spirit. I mean, they're all one, but... Yeah. Had uh, you been reading the Bible, or...? Not at all. Hadn't you? Have nope. you now? Yes, I've read it all the way through from Genesis to Revelation. Have you really? Yes, in 30 days. Wow. Yes. <laughs> what did you get out of that? Uh, I, sorry, I got out of that that, um, you know, Jesus is enough, His grace is sufficient, not deny yourselves of all and God isn't then. Or not after all we can do, but yeah. but His grace is sufficient. It's, I mean, I there's. It's uh, an interesting little thought, isn't it? Yeah, that Jesus has done everything. I'm beating that. Uh, I'm beating that horse here, but. No, no. I think that's the message that we all want to share with the Mormons: is that Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough, and what He did, anything we add to that is our own works. And blasphemy before God, actually, yeah, heresy. And, and it, well, it diminishes what he did. Yes. It takes our focus off of him. Have you ever thought about Moroni being on top of the temples? Oh, yeah, total idol, total demon. I believe it's a demon. I believe See, it's now, I, I thought that was the most wonderful thing in the world until, yep. I, until I learned Christianity. And, and, and now I see it kind of as a golden idol up yes. there on the temple. It's kind of scary. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... Kind of like all the old Israel when, golden they, calf, yes. when they did the golden calf, yep. right? Yeah, it says in, I think it's Exodus or somewhere, don't don't have any graven any images. Oh, yeah, part of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting, too, is in Galatians, when it talks about if, another, if an angel comes and yep. preaches any other gospel than the one I've preached, and that was Paul... And he got his gospel from Jesus. Yes. Uh, let them be accursed. Yeah. You know, and here we have an angel coming and uh, to Joseph Smith and supposedly, preach, yeah, supposedly good, and preaching another gospel, yeah. another Jesus. Uh, uh, what did you think? I mean, Jesus was our older brother, right? Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. I mean, now I see that as blasphemous, and actually, quite honestly, even going to more meetings sometimes, and I use that. I'm saying in my heart, I mean, I'm just thinking, blast me, blast me, blast me. He's not well, my brother, he's my creator. Yeah. And my Lord and Savior. Isn't that, that, it's wonderful that you've had that experience that you did and that you've yeah. come to know who he is. And I can see you're wearing a cross. At, yeah, sorry, that offends you a bit. Oh, no, it doesn't offend me. I, th okay. I know it offends Mormons a little bit. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Because the cross is talked about so much in the New Testament. Yes, but the message of the cross is... Yeah, the message of the cross, and they don't even use it. Nope. In fact, to them, they're not happy with that. No. Yeah. In fact, my mom, she thinks, well, we don't hate it. It's just that, yeah. it's just that she said it reminds her of the Catholics. Well, do you know what? If you were wearing a little Moroni yeah. on your shirt, the LDS would think that was okay. Yeah, they would. Wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just... Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's... I'm sorry, but it's kind of stupid to me because <laughs> I love the cross. Even, I'll say this, even in my LDS visions, they always point me to the cross, even then. So God was drawing me to him even then. Maybe softening your heart a little bit so yep. that when you heard the good news. Yes. Yeah. That you'd accept it. Yep. Yeah. I love the cross. I mean, there's people that have, and I don't mean to promote uh, Sean McCraney, but he uh, say he, he used the, the three meanings of the cross to a Christian. He used three big words. I can't remember what they were, but I got it in the instant that I watched his <laughs> sermon. I was like, yeah, that's what it means to me. Yeah. Well, it means so much to me too now, and I, I just, uh, I didn't like it at all as a Mormon. Yeah. I and mean, you just, well, that's the way we're taught. 
Yeah. And so we don't even think of it. But now coming to the cross or accepting Jesus' sacrifice, his death, burial, and resurrection yes. yeah. is, is everything. Yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't have a quick overnight kind of born again experience, kind of like it sounds like maybe you did. I know some people do and some people don't. Mine's been more of a, a gradual acceptance and studying and understanding what Jesus did for me. But, but now, I'm, it sounds like we're in the same place. We, yeah. we trust and love Jesus and appreciate what he did for us. Yeah, can I say something on that? Sure. Yeah, also, after that experience with the born again experience, it was a struggle. Like you're saying that you didn't have a quick overnight one. Well, you did. Took I took you a little while too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I had that experience, but then it would always, I would always go, still go back and forth for a while until just recently, really, till I really found out I had all my questions answered. I started talking to the Lord, yeah. praying. I'm good. Proud of you. Yeah, I You mentioned to me earlier about going to a Christian church the first time. Yes. You thought that was a little weird, did you? Yeah, I actually. I hate to use this word, but I actually did hate it the first time. Really? The first time. You, you, you didn't like the music? Or I the, didn't like the message, actually. I think it's God convicting me because it was all about grace alone and uh, against Joseph Smith and all that. He was convicting me. I didn't like that, like most sinners know. Yeah. But. And now? Uh, and now I, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was so impressed how, how the message is always about Jesus. Yes. You know, the words on the screen and the songs are all about Jesus, praising him. And yeah, praise him, God. Rather than praise to the man. Yeah, right? praise to the man. I used to have, well, I still do, I have a, a version of that that I made up that says praise to the lamb. Instead oh. of praise to the man. <laughs> praise to the lamb. I have to think about Jehovah. that one. <laughs> yeah, who is Jehovah. Yeah. And there was another one that told me, another Christian that said her version of it is Million, billions shall know Jesus died for their sin. Yeah. You know, when I think about Jesus as the lamb, he was sacrificed. And of course, that's what the Israelites did in their yeah. temple, was sacrifice animals and shed their blood and sprinkle the blood on in the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And it was just always so funny to me that uh, now, now that I've become Christian, that in the Mormon church, they go through the temple. There's nothing about, and they think it's a restoration of the temple, but. Yeah, they think it's all symbolic about, they do say it's all about Christ, but they say it's all symbolic. And they're thinking, eh. Yeah, no. well, and, you know, the old temple, they, the women couldn't go in. Yeah. Only the Levites could really go in. Yeah. So. Uh, they got nothing in it's there. So it's so different. It's yeah. just a new religion, really. Yeah, it is. Don't you think? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, and I can say something on that, too. They, uh, have something so different. None of, I learned this from other posts too, but none of the stuff that is in the temple today, supposedly temple today, was done anciently. Oh, absolutely. And none of the ancient stuff that was done anciently is done in their temple. That's a good point. In fact, masonry is more, yes. more prevalent in the Mormon church, LDS church, than yep. or in the LDS temple. Yeah. So what has your family thought about your journey here? Oh, they hate it. Even my older brother who's a drug addict. Both brothers are inactive, agnostic or atheist. But, but they're, they're not Christian, though? No, they're not. And they're not happy about my... I mean, my, my twin doesn't care as much. He's just annoyed by my Christian... Oh, he's wearing the cross and... Oh. And then he's not Mormon. Yeah. My older are brother... Are they here in Utah? Yes, my older brother... He he's believes in the ancient astronaut theory, or ancient alien theory, that there are creators. Oh. And but he's a huge drug addict, but he says, you know, it makes me mad, even though he's not really a believer. It makes him mad that I'm a Christian because he said, you know, it just scares me that some one person can get you to change your whole beliefs. Well, the best thing you can do is just love, right? Yeah. Love them and. Your mom is, how is she with things? Oh, she hates it. She slammed the door today saying, this is more than I can take. Oh, do you, do you live with them? Yes. Oh, do you? Yes. Oh, that's... I don't have any money, so I live with them. Yeah. yeah no well, doubt. I hope she'll be understanding and show love to you. And I mean, you, you're on a journey and... Yeah. You know, you love God and you love your fellow men and... Yeah. You know, be patient with each other and, and maybe through your example... You know, maybe, who knows, even 
even I converted to Christianity, so your mom could too, or yeah. your dad. Yeah. yeah, it's a great message, though, isn't it? So, yes. Yeah. Jesus saves. Jesus is my all in all. <laughs> yeah. Now you, uh, uh, I was going to ask you about uh, your prayers and stuff. Do you do you feel like your prayers are any different than they used to be? Oh yes, they are. They're yeah. all about Jesus. They're all about yeah. dear Jesus. Please do this, or thank you for this. Not give me, give me, give me. <laughs> not <laughs> praying. You're more oh, thankful, or yeah, not not praying just to the Father. Not saying these weird monotone prayers of dear Heavenly Father. You know this repetitive religious prayer. It's more. But you really feel you like God. you're talking to Jesus. Yes, I feel that too. I I think my Mormon prayers were like you say, dear Heavenly Father, and yeah, they were kind of rote. I mean, but now talking to Jesus, it's more like talking to a friend. Yes, it is. You know, to somebody that understands what what we do yeah. and what yeah. we've been through. Well, gosh. We're just about out of time. Anything you want to share with your family or friends? Um, sorry to offend you all, but Jesus is enough. <laughs> Jesus saves, and Jesus loves you. Amen. <laughs> well, that kind of, nothing can come after amen, can it? <laughs> no, sorry. I no. don't mean to. No, that's fine. Okay. No, but I, I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, and I, I hope that message comes clear to everybody that... Uh, that's just how we feel, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that he's enough. And, and I know I met you over at a, uh, at a Adams Road Band concert. Yes. And that's their whole thing is Jesus is enough, right? Yeah. Did you get some of those stickers? And, I got this. And oh, you got that? Yeah. yeah. Jesus and, is enough. And Mark has some of those stickers, so. That's, I, your, that's your friend. Yeah, yeah. yes, I have. Well, Jonathan, thanks so much for sharing your story. Any last minute thoughts or anything? Just please read the Bible like a child. Yeah. Like a child would read it. You know, not childish, but yeah. with no preconceived notion of what it means. Just humble, asking God what what everything yeah. means. And just read the Bible for what it is. Don't yeah. read the text. Just read it for what it says for what it is. I'd say amen to that. Yeah, amen. All right. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.